you on a Sunday. I'm going to be joined by the great Jared Hector from uh, NBA. He's a sports writer. And uh, I think I have a special guest with me, and he's going to make an appearance soon. But wait till, let's see. Here we go. Okay, Jared, you can come in now if you want. Wait till you. Yo. Hey, Jared, what's up? Oh. Yo, um, my co- how are you? This is my cousin. He just wanted hey. to say hi. What's up, man? Hi, hey, how are you? Good, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? Yeah, that's my cousin, so. Can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> All good. <laughs> uh, you want to say anything before we start? Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. Uh, thanks for joining us this podcast. Hey, man, appreciate you, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. That's good. Good job. <laughs> All right, so yeah, uh, this, this this is my first IG live. Am I upside down or sideways? Oh, turn turn your phone. Uh, turn your phone. There we go. Like that. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. There we go. I knew I, I knew something was up. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, man, I, it's been a while since uh, we I, I, because I'm always following you guys with Jenna and uh, Dexter and Brian. You guys do a fantastic job. But first of all, before we get into anything, I just want to uh, say. Uh, thank you for joining this podcast, especially on a Sunday afternoon where you should be spending time with the family. But uh, I have, that's why I have family over right now. But uh, but how are you and your family doing during this tough situation? We're doing all right, man. You know, everybody is just sort of maintaining. We're doing what we can. Um, you know, that's that's the nature of where we are with this with this pandemic. Right. Everybody's dealing with things and we're all just doing our best with social distancing. We're isolating. We're doing what we got to do. And still out here creating content so that's the name yeah. of the game same thing with me i'm, I'm trying to I'm, I'm creating content too for my podcast i mean uh, i've been busy with that staying active especially with my workouts i'm trying to get my workouts in especially in the house and uh and i, I have a few more i have a couple uh, next this week coming up i have a big uh, basically i'm full uh, full with interviews this week coming up so but uh yeah but um before and then uh, before we get to anything i just want to say uh First of all, how, how did you get into? Uh, can you tell everyone how did you get into the uh, sports business and when that when did that yeah. become interested for you? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I like probably most people, right? I've been a fan of sports and played sports my whole life since uh, since I was young, right? And always really enjoyed everything: football, basketball, baseball, hockey, tennis, golf. I mean, it, it, it runs the gamut. I, I like all of it, and you know, like like anything else. You work and you and I've worked in a, a few different industries and an opportunity presented itself for me later in life than for most people. Right. A lot of people get into their sports journalism career right out of college. I mean, yeah. I, I, it took me. a I didn't get into this business till 17 years post college. Right. So I lived another life and another career doing other things. But I had an opportunity to jump into this and finally do what I wanted to do, which was sports and uh, journalism. And it's been great. You know, I get to create content. Get to talk to athletes and entertainers, and it's fun stuff. Nice. Um, and then uh, with your podcast, Seven Foot po- Seven Footer Podcast, um, when did that? When did this become about? And when did uh, how? When where did you guys meet up with each other? And when did you guys start this with Jenna, Brian, and Dexter? Yeah. So Brian and Dexter have their own podcast, right? So they do okay. the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast. Yeah. Um, and Jenna and I do the Seven Footers Basketball podcast. So it's like everything else, right? I mean, there's a huge community out there of independent creators like yourself um, who we're just we we want to create stuff. And we have the beauty of, to, of where we are now is we've got all this great technology, right? We've got iPhones that allows you to do whatever you want, right? So we're out here and we're just putting stuff together and we're doing what we can. And so Jenna and I met. Kind of three, four years ago now at the NBA store. We we're there both for our different outlets covering the new Nike connected jerseys. And we started talking about basketball and said, you know, it'd be cool. Like we get a lot of similar NBA interests and thoughts. And I was mm-hmm. like, you know, we should do a podcast. And we kind of just talked and talked. And then over time, it finally came to fruition. And here we are. 66 episodes in <laughs> wow yeah so and plus i had the opportunity to go live with you guys one t- a couple yeah. times way in the back i was like it seems like it seems like five years but it's it's i think it's was, <laughs> i think it's been two i think two years when i started it's joining you. two years yeah 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 so uh, the beginning yeah when we were at our at our different studio yeah now now we're at gotham here in new york city but yeah uh, that's uh that's that's how that's how it's been man we're just we're just growing one one day at a time Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, 
uh, before we get into like the, all the NBA stuff and the other, uh, I heard the, um, uh, you guys had a recent podcast with the a rising NBA star. Um, mm-hmm. if, if, you, if you don't, uh, you're not, you guys, you guys are not going to share that yet, right? No, it, it, that episode comes out tomorrow. So when you okay, guys, so- uh, yep. So tomorrow it'll be, it'll be downloaded up on Apple podcast, Spotify, YouTube. I will give you one hint. The one hint is that player is from the 2018 NBA draft class. That's all I'll give you okay. guys. But yeah, it's okay. a really good okay. interview. We had a really good, really good conversation. And that episode comes out tomorrow. Again, Apple Podcast, Spotify, YouTube, Seven Footers Podcast. That's where you'll find it. Okay. Yeah, so now first I want to talk about these two local teams with the Knicks uh, and the Nets. Uh, but for, obviously uh, both teams are heading into different directions. The Nets are rising right now. The Knicks are re- rebuilding. Uh, but let's first talk about the Nets here because the team. I'm a New York Knicks fan, but I'm uh, unfortunately. But I watch. I've been watching more Nets games, but since there's no season, uh, obviously. But uh, for the Nets, um, some interesting things here uh, with the long layoff. I I, I I I actually talked to Christian Winfield uh, last week. I interviewed him on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Christian Winfield, the mm-hmm. Brooklyn Nets reporter. Yep. Um, he, said, he doesn't think. Oh yeah, he doesn't think that uh, KD will come back. Before the playoff in the playoffs, he said that they should save him for next year. Um, so I, I just I just want to get your take on that. Do you think they should save him for next year, KD, and they bring him back for the playoffs? If he's, uh, because he said that he's ninety five percent ready. Well, KD's looking good uh, in the times that I've seen him. Um, the 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 injury, the Achilles tendon rehab injury, is going well. Um, okay. But you know, there's a long way to go from that to then doing on-court work, which he's doing, but then doing it in game situations, right? Those are those are steps along the way. Um, first, look, I don't even think we're going to finish this NBA season. Like, I'm between, you know, as you know, I have people that I talk to within the league, within the Players Association. Of course, they're being optimistic about, you know, getting in the season in. But just given the way that the virus is spreading and the way in which you can't, we don't have enough testing to guarantee that, Anybody who walks into an arena isn't carrying it, isn't right. There's too many variables right now, and we don't have this thing sort of isolated. So I don't know when or if a season is going to resume. So I'm going to – my thought has been for the longest time that I don't think the rest of the season gets played. That, that's that's in my stance, and I'm, I'm sticking to that. Uh, that. That being the case, I, I'm actually not even sure how the rest of the sports landscape looks going forward. So you, let's just say no more NBA season. I don't think it's going to be, okay, we'll just start again next year, training camp uh, in September, training camp in October. I don't think it's going to be that either. All right. I I really, because again, the, the big thing they have to guarantee is the safety of all the players, staff, and everybody, and all the fans. And I don't know how quite we have that squared away yet, and there aren't enough people from the health professionals uh, spaces talking about when again we can gather large groups of people together in these rooms right that's that's what you have to look for and i don't know when that's going to happen mm, interesting um so uh well, but so you don't question, think though yeah but to, to your kd point this could be a blessing in disguise for him right so let's say that there was no coronavirus right and he just did the normal routine and came back for training camp and started next season well, there would still be a ramp up time, right? Because you've got to get game shape. It's just again playing pickup or even practicing hard is very different than playing in a game. All right. So if this stretches out long and we don't see actual organized basketball, let's just say for the rest of this calendar year, or not till late December, like Christmas, that gives him extra ramp time, right? So maybe when he comes back, let's say the season starts this year on Christmas, the next season. Well, he would have had extra time now because there was no league play, right, to really ramp himself up. So when he comes back, he's a little bit further ahead of where he would have been had the season started normally in October, right? So that's the silver lining if you're a Nets fan and and you're looking for KD to come back. Mm. Yeah, so so you're you're saying that the the playoffs will not happen this year? I, I, I do not think so. Again, I'm not I'm not reporting that. I'm not saying that any of my sources have said that. As I said, my sources are all optimistic that they're going to yeah. play at some point this season. But based on what I'm just seeing worldwide and my mm-hmm. own, you know, putting two and two together, I don't see it. Okay. So uh, so now to the coaching situation. Um, I was kind of surprised that they let go of Kenny Axis. And that was, that was a puzzling move to me. And 
Uh, I just want to get your reaction to that. And uh, what do you think? Where do you think they will go for the next head coach? I know it's too early to tell, but where do you, where do you, what is your best guess that they will go for the next head coach? But first, uh, what was your reaction? So it's interesting. To- Mm -hmm. It it was interesting. So, as you know, like Christian, I cover the net. So we were in the arena the night that so it was a they got blown out on a Wednesday night and then they came back on Friday and blew out another team and won. Right. So blowout loss, blowout win. Then we hear Saturday morning, Kenny gets fired. But that Wednesday night when they got blown out, normally after the game, we go into the press conference room and wait for Kenny to to come and address the address us. And it took a long time for him to get to the podium. We're just sitting there like. He's not, I mean, normally at most 10 minutes after the end of the game, he's ready. They're ready to talk. We were waiting for half an hour, almost 45 minutes. And we're all going, what's going on? And we, we figured because of the blowout, they must be getting into it in the locker room, right? Really like passionate discussion. Kenny came out and said, you know, we had a spirited discussion in the locker room. Well, unbeknownst to us, you know, that was, that was when all that stuff came out about different players speaking up and saying, you know, this team doesn't have the habits of a champion and all those things. And they have the blowout win on Friday. So, the loss coming or the the, the 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 dismissal coming Saturday morning was surprising because like well, they just won big. Why would why would they move? But look, here's the reality of the NBA, right? Coaching an upstart up and coming team with young guys and guys who are who have been developed is a very different thing than coaching a team with superstars, right? Those are, those are just two two completely different things. In the NBA, superstars drive what goes on, right? whether indirectly or directly. That's just the name of the game because there's only a handful of them that can dictate if you have one of these guys, we have a chance of winning the title, right? So with that level of play, they have a certain level of say in any in any sort of organization that they're in. So, you know, that's, that's the reality of that. And for Brooklyn right now, when le- having Kenny leave or dismiss so early with the rest of the season to go, that gave Sean a leg up, obviously, in looking for who his next replacement is going to be. And also yeah. gave Kenny the opportunity to interview out and really have his pick of any jobs that become available. Of course, with the season being suspended right now, everything's in limbo. But I know Sean Marks and the, and the Nets Brain Trust are working on a staff and working on figuring out who the next head coach would be. Look, the big thing is whoever the next head coach is going to be is going to have to get some kind of tacit buy-in and approval from KD and Kyrie, right? Like that's mm, that's yeah. going to have to go that way because those are those are the guys, and I'm not saying that they're gonna they're gonna pick their guy, but they're gonna have to give some kind of yeah, okay, we're cool with this. So I brought I brought up an outside of candidate box to Kristen. So let me see, let me get your take on this. I said Greg Popovich has a very perfect fit for them. What well, do you th- I will say this: Pop is a guy who immediately when he walked into the locker room would command instant respect right from KD, Kyrie, everybody else in line so from that standpoint yes the only thing that makes me hesitant about pop and it's funny because I, I i talked to some people about this a few months ago and was always floating pop's name out there you know pop's getting on the you know he's getting up there in age right and i don't know that he necessarily wants to relocate to the east coast and go to the gr- this grind again because the big thing about the nba that the casual fan doesn't realize yes the championship's all great but the regular season is a grind that right. is 82 games and all that back and forth and it's a lot and the older you get the less and less you want to deal with that and you know i could see pop being like uh i don't know but he would be someone who would instantly come in no problem and that that team would be going in in the right direction quickly you know i think what you might start looking at are people off those coaching trees like the pop coaching tree. So like coach bud up in Milwaukee, right. He's from pop tree. So who else falls off, off of that line? Right. Yeah. I want to look at the Steve Kerr line, right? Like who, who else falls off of that line? Um, those are the kinds of things you'd be looking at, or the Nets can go a totally different route and figure, Hey, you know, the Boston Celtics and the, the Memphis Grizzlies have been successful hiring young coaches, right? Um, Taylor Jenkins, the Grizzlies coach, is from the Bud, the Bud and Holzer tree. Mm-hmm. And as you know, uh, Brad Stevens came from college, right? So that could be a direction that that Sean goes. But again, regardless, whoever it's going to be, it has to get the KD and Kyrie yeah. stamp of approval, which is why it probably will be someone who's already had head coaching NBA experience coaching veteran superstar players like them. So do you see like names like Van Gundy, Mark Jackson, Tom Thibodeau, Tyron Lue? 
the same names that keep getting recirculated. I, I Thibodeau, I'm going to say no only because he has a reputation.